Welcome to the next video in the Nephew Elite series where I teach my nephew to trade. This video will be the top technical indicators or indicators every trader should know. That's what we're going to dive into. Basically what we did here, Tony, I, we've already done this, is I just went to Google and I just went to the top trading indicators. And of course we got clickbank tied or clickbait titles that said 20 technical indicators you can trust while stock trading. Uh, best technical indicators, 17 most used. The 10 trading indicators every trader should know. So you're, we're going to go through these because that's obviously what Google says. Uh, yeah. So, um, but this this will be a good just intro of like, okay, here are some of the indicators that exist. Now, ordinarily I probably wouldn't do this, but what I what I want you to have is a, a kind of an idea of what's out there okay. so, so that you have context. Uh, and then when we do discuss a specific indicator, why you might want to use it, you'll at least have context of like, what are some of the indicators out there beyond just the intro that we covered? All right. Okay. So let's just go to one of these articles and I'm just going to break down the indicators that they go through. So this one here, the 10 best trading indicators is the moving average. We covered that. The exponential, well, we're going to cover that. There's another one called a stochastic oscillator. Uh, the moving average convergence divergence, that's called the MACD. Uh, we have Bollinger Bands. We have the RSI, Relative Strike Index. We have Fibonacci Retracement. Uh, Ichimoku Cloud, a standard deviation, and then the ADI, the Average Directional Index. So these are just indicator names. Okay. And they each one does a little bit different thing. Each one is, is designed to give you different information about the market. Let's go to one other uh, other article that is the clickbait article moving averages MACD RSI CCI so that's a new one you haven't heard channel commodity index super trend uh, volume I don't know why that's as an indicator because that's on every chart price volume trend uh, open interest VWAP average directional index OBV which is an on balance um, volume I know I'm just saying a bunch of words mm -hmm. so I get it Money flow index, that's the MFI, uh, and then the Arun. So we're going to go into the chart and we're going to actually pull out some of these. And I'm going to just share with you the philosophy of some of these indicators. Okay. So I just, like that VWAP one. Yeah. So we're, actually the VWAP is one that we use in the system. Okay. So the VWAP, and there's, so there's a simple way, as, as you'll discover in what you're going to learn, there's always a simple way to do it. But oftentimes, because it's simple, it doesn't work. I shouldn't say that. How do I say this the right way? Simple usually does work. But the way that it's taught in trading is not sometimes taught by people that actually trade. So you'll read advice on how to use these indicators. And it's just the same old advice. It's not by someone that actually is out there trading the market with these indicators. So what you're going to learn, what you're learning here is someone that actually uses these tools successfully instead of someone that's just regurgitating what they read in a book. I about shared, how many different ones there are? No, about how they work and how to use them. So okay. like I said, one of the things that floored me is the number one technical analysis book is written not by a trader. It's written by a journalist. So uh, now you could say, well, Okay, a journalist probably is good at getting the information from traders and then putting it into a book. But the way I look at it is I would rather have a technical analysis book by a trader that's been in the trenches mm -hmm. compared to it's it's just like war books. Like are you going to get the truth of war from a not from a journalist you might, but are you really going to get the truth of war from someone that was in the trenches in World War II? Yeah. You know which one are you going to get like the deep-hearted the reality most likely to do the trenches. Yeah. And he's going to, that person's going to tell you things that you would never imagine happens in warfare that the journalists couldn't imagine or wouldn't put it in a book because they, they wouldn't think it's real. Yeah. Right. That's, that's just the way it is. Sometimes in, in, in tense situations, the funniest stuff happens and it's almost like it's not real. It's the same way with trading where a lot of times the regurgitation of the, of how to use these things is, uh, just regurgitation. It's not really the best way to use things. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I, I'm hoping I didn't go down too much of a rabbit hole there. Oh, no. 
Okay. It was a good explanation of kind of the backstory of everything. So let's go and let's add a Bollinger Band. So Bollinger Band is an interesting indicator. Uh, I think it's named after someone named Bollinger, pretty sure. And what a Bollinger Band does is we'll, we'll add it to the chart. And you'll see here on the chart, it added these, these kind of lines and then this channel. Now, the basis of a Bollinger Band is the 20 moving average simple moving average. So it's the 20 simple moving average is this middle line right here. And then what it does is it creates these deviation bands. The way to look at it is that the simple way to look at this is that these blue bands that you see here are a deviation from uh, is where price is currently deviating from the simple moving average. I'm okay. I'm making this very simple. I'm not explaining it in the exact, it, I could sit down and explain it exactly, but you don't, you just need to think about it kind of this way. Now, how people trade with the Bollinger Bands, one of the ways is that when price gets near an extreme, they'll fade that move because they expect it to come back to the Bollinger Band or, or come back to the, the midpoint, the 20 moving average. Okay. So these lines are extremes, meaning that when, when the price gets down here, down low, generally it will bounce back and come back to the 20. So generally what the, the way to look at Bollinger Bands is that it comes down low, it comes back to the 20 and maybe it goes back high and it comes back and forth. You can see that here in the chart. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the challenge with Bollinger Bands is once again, it is lagging. So lagging means that well, you can see here the current price, where are we at in the current price? And we're above the Bollinger Band. So just because we're above, see, it's so hard to see, but see how current price is above the Bollinger Band? Yeah. Well, a simple rule would be like you short this move and expect it to go down. That'd be the simple rule. And if that worked uh, at a high percentage of time, people would use Bollinger Bands and they would trade just with that and they'd be successful traders problem is it doesn't quite work that reliably yeah Does that make sense yes but that's the philosophy be behind bollinger bands so this is an example of an indicator that uses the simple moving average the ma and then puts deviation bands on top of it and then what you do is you typically trade at extremes the other thing that you could do is once it gets outside of the the bollinger band you could then maybe continue with a momentum move and instead of going short you would go long so you would go long here instead of going short. But just using the Bollinger Bands by itself usually doesn't provide you enough edge. So just to make sure you're saying the deviation is that high and low between the chart? Uh, it's, it's, you know what, I should probably look this up so I'm, I'm being exactly accurate. So one second. So I just, I wanted to make sure that I'm, I'm, give, I'm not explaining it to you in a way that is false based on how I look at it. But so th this is the middle band and then these are called the upper, this is the upper band and this is the lower band. Okay. Now you, you, you did ask as I was doing the search, you said, okay, well, why does it expand like that? Well, it expands like that because the volatility, volatility is basically the size. The way to look at it is the size of the candles. So you notice here, so, see here on this chart here where it it the candles start increasing in size in in range they're bigger candles yeah when that happens then the bollinger bands will expand because what these bands are they're a standard deviation from this price okay so now one of the strategies that that people do use is that when the bollinger bands converge sometimes that's a no trade zone because they're converging some people look at that and say they're converging. It's building energy to go to the next level. Okay, so, so where so, it's really skinny right there, then yeah. it gets super right. Yeah, so there's some strategies where people say, okay, I'm going to look for the skinny parts. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to devise a strategy to tell me should I be long or short. And then what they do is they just look for those skinny parts. And then they they have a trade system that, that tells them that, okay, it's going to be long or short. Okay, so like right there when that reaction happens and it jumps. Yeah. So okay. here, when it, I mean, this is, I don't know, this is seven in the morning. So the market opened here. This is during the market hours. So this is overnight. 
Oh, okay, because so, low volume. Yeah, low volume, low trading. So you'll see that. Um, so that's one strip. One strategy that people use with Bollinger Bands is that they'll look forward to tighten, and then they'll create a strategy about okay, how do I then trade around that? So Bollinger Bands are are a, in in our trade system. We use extreme bands around the RDA. Same concept. Okay. So we have the RDA, and then we have deviation bands that tell us various deviations from the price of the RDA. Those are reaction areas. It's kind of the same concept, uh, or it's the same concept. Uh, it's just that uh, Bollinger Bands uses a simple moving average, and uh, they're using a deviation. We do a little bit different calculation. Okay. So here's the thing. We could probably, I could sit down and talk about indicators and the philosophy for hours because I find this fascinating. But as far as the trade system that you're learning, it's, I want you to know these things, but at the same time, I don't want to overwhelm you with information that is unnecessary because next week you're going to be trading. With the with indicators, me. with the Rex Dog trading. Yeah, with system. the Rex Dog trading system. You're going to have enough knowledge that I'm going to trust you to trade uh, at least with a demo account first. We'll see how that day goes on a demo account. But it's my intention that the next day you're going to be trading live capital. Now, it's not going to be more than three grand, but my expectation is that you're going to have enough rudimentary knowledge of the trading system that you will be able to execute trades. You still will have a lot more to learn, but, you, but you'll be in the real market and you're going to learn the psychology of whether or not the things you need to work on. So... You, but so I don't want to. I want to provide you with information. Uh, so, so for instance, we just offline. We just talked about standard deviation. I just said you. What's amazing about the universe is that these standard deviations you see everywhere. It just it, it like I explained it. Uh, the Bollinger Band, the base standard deviation that the Bollinger Band uses, is a two standard deviation. What that means, basically, and and if I don't explain this perfectly, look, I'm not a mathematician, I'm not a, I'm not a rocket surgeon, so like, what what I, the way I try to explain it is the best. Basically, most people, the middle class and the poor, if you look at uh, the world, they exist within one standard deviation here, and you'll find this throughout nature and the universe. Like these deviations, just it's almost scary sometimes how well this works so most people middle class lower class are in this this one standard deviation when you get to between one and two standard deviation you have the upper middle class okay uh and and that's a lo less amount of people mm -hmm. it's like the ceos the executives you know the people that that make anywhere from i think it's five hundred thousand to like a couple million a year i mean that's up that today in the United States, at least, is I think upper middle class. It's probably less than that. I don't have the exact stats. But the concept to get is that as the deviation gets further, what it's basically telling you is that there's less amount of time spent there and there's less amount of things in that deviation. So in this between two and three deviations, these are the people that have $50 million to $100 million. They're still rich, but they're not the billionaires. Mm -hmm. They're not the 1% to 1%. This 0.1%, these are the billionaires. The Elon Musk is, you know, the, the other people like that. But then there's, so these, so when you look at a chart and you're talking about standard deviations, well, if we could drop this down to one, basically the way to read that is that, well, most of the trading that happens on a chart is going to happen within one standard deviation. And that's what you see here. Most of the trading, I mean, sometimes it gets outside of the deviation, okay. but most of the trading, a lot of times, except for when it's getting really volatile, is within a one standard deviation between the two bands. You see that? See how trading's kind of, most of the time it's between the two bands, Yeah. but it's not that far away. But then there is volatility moves where it does, but then it comes back and it spends a little bit of time within one standard deviation. Mm -hmm. So when it jumps like that, that's when it would go to that two and three deviation yeah so you'll see here when we change this to two all that's saying is that okay that's a two standard deviation move that's even more rare mm -hmm. so if we were to put three on this that would be it's even more rare that price would get above three standard deviations so then you would want to maybe fade that move or 
like I said, we could get real in, real into the weeds, mm-hmm. but what I just really want you to understand is kind of the concept of, of the indicator and some concepts of like standard deviations. Okay. Does that make sense? I think I understand now, yes. Okay. So let's move on to another indicator that's going to be a, a, a separate indicator that's down below. Uh, so let me figure out which one would be the best one for that. Okay. All right, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll pull on the RSI. So this is relative strength index. And let's just do the basic RSI. And what I'm going to teach you here is actually, we're not going to go into this in depth because here's what you'll learn. Whenever you find an indicator, you can do a Google search and then you can go to a site like Investopedia and then it will give you like all the information. When it was created, how it's, how it, it's calculated it will give you you know it tells you exactly how it's calculated it will tell you how to use it uh it will, you know so in a lot of ways like i said that this is i don't i'll tell you the indicators that i think you need to understand and know mm-hmm. so i'll create a list and then you can do the research on your own yeah you can just send me like some notes on which ones that you want me to do and i can go yeah. research it like i said it's good because remember this is what your competition is using yeah they're using some a lot of your competition are using these tools so understanding how they're interpreting the market and i'll share a little secret not really a secret i guess but the indicators that are in the rex dog system i spent i don't know how many years or hours time money capital going through every indicator that you could think of because like i'm obsessive Mm-hmm. You know, I think I'm somewhere on the spectrum, I think. <laughs> so, like, I would I would spend four days going through the MACD or the RSI. Okay. And I would break it down. I would change settings. I would then, I had a tool that I could back test. I, I need to find this tool. I don't think it exists anymore. I could download data from, like, the 1968 stock market. Or, like, I could load data from, like, the, the stock market crash, the, the Great Depression. Mm-hmm. Or the 1987 crash or even the, the rises of 2000 and then I could change settings and then it would give me kind of a an understanding of whether or not those settings were reliable so I did that for a while until I realized okay this isn't this isn't the way to go and then I started refining and then I, I created a, a process for how I look at indicators and how whether or not I I, I understand them enough but how I even pay attention to them. Does that make sense? Yes. So like here, the RSI, like I said, you can go and you're going to learn about how it works. But one of the basic concepts of the RSI is that, and let's just go through this so that we're, I'm telling you exactly. So the RSI looks like this. It has this, this, these uh, 70% line there. See that line there? Yeah. And then a 30% line. Well, when, when the RSI is below the 30% line, that orange line, yeah, it's called what's called oversold. And okay. then generally what you're looking for when something's oversold is then you correlate it to the chart and you would be buying that. Oh, okay. And then generally when something's overbought, You'd generally you would be selling, but that's not always the case because things could be overbought for a very long time and price could continue to go up. Mm-hmm. Same with price could be oversold for a very long time. But generally, this indicator does a pretty good job. It generally, you can see here on this five-minute chart here, when it got into the, uh, I always get this, even though I know this indicator, the overbought, I always say it backwards. When it got in the overbought range here, what did it do? It sold off. When it got into the overbought here, it sold off. See okay, that? so those two white lines are... Well, the purple line. So see that purple line? Well, I mean like the overbought. Yeah, yeah. so when it's uh, when it's above this one, it's overbought. When it's below okay. this one, it's oversold. So that's the simple way to read this oscillator. Uh, then this is a moving average line. So this is a signal line. We won't get it. Like I said, Google is your friend. I mean, right now, Google still, Google, the, the, the results from Google are progressively getting worse. <laughs> but like when you come across an indicator, you're like, oh, I wonder how that works. Just Google it and then you're going to get three or four of the top sites will tell you exactly what it does. Okay. So, Sweet. so that's like here where it just went over, but notice how like here on the chart, if we actually look at this chart area right here and it just went over the overbought and then it sold off a little bit, but it didn't sell off that much. 
but then look at how how low the indicator down here went so that sold off down here it found a level here it found a level and it used this level then to move up okay so see that well that kind of is represented here in the chart but if you were waiting for it to get down to the down below this line the bottom line you wouldn't have took that trade if you were just using this indicator or you have a rule where you look at this indicator and you say okay well the previous this previous low here was made here so if it gets down below this then i should be a buyer because this is the previous level here okay so you see how you correlate the upper chart from the lower chart yeah it's just a lot of work to me yeah i just i because our system already calculates this uh where we're already interpreting what this chart does or what this indicator does through our system through the rules through the patterns and through the indicators okay so that's the way to look at it so uh th that'll be probably the this will probably be good for like just sharing with you like the indicators and now i mean now we should get into more of the system now it's like i'm kind of teaching you the the battle space that you're in mm. now we're just going to just talk about just the system you're going to be using because that's what's going to matter most okay uh, so let's recap this video just at a high level. You don't need to recap it in, in detail. Just share with me briefly what we covered in this training. So what you share with me is that uh, TradingView has thousands of different indicators. And if I need to, I can Google to further understand how they work. Um, as well as I can always come to you for extra details and you can further explain to me. Uh, we may not use all those indicators that other people will use, but... I should know what other traders are using to further expand my knowledge in trading. Yeah. I think it's helpful to understand the mindset of other traders just because that's that's your competition. So yeah. you know, trading, you're never going to you're never going to figure out trading. It's always going to be a, ch a challenge. There's always going to be a new challenge. But one of the things is that there's many different ways to trade the market and some some traders love Bollinger Bands. Some traders love the RSI. Some traders do very well with it. Uh, and you might find that you want to add it to the system. Uh, what you'll learn in the Rexdog trading system is the foundation indicators that give you an edge. And then if you want to add something on top of that, because it helps you have more conviction in trades, I'm all for it. Yeah. So I did find the Bollinger Brands a very cool concept. Yeah. And, and we actually have a concept like that in the trading system. So we use ex extreme and deviation bands. So we use the concept of Bollinger Bands around the RDA. And you'll see how powerful that is as we kind of move on here in the training. Okay, sweet. All right, so take us out. Yut.